You won't believe the recent revelation made by scientists, which shook the entire space industry. The James Webb Space Telescope discovered two super-Earths and is all set to study them to know in detail about the vast space life that contains numerous planets and constellations. Yes, you heard that right. After the discovery, what do you think is a new surprise that's to come next in line? Are you excited to witness the magic that the universe unfolds? Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we bring to you the in-depth details of the most powerful telescopes ever built by man. Due to the smaller planet's comparative brightness next to a star and their diminutive size, rocky planets are more complicated to see with current telescope technology than gas giants. Webb, on the other hand, is well able to study two planets slightly bigger than Earth, known as super-Earths, thanks to its potent mirror and deep space location. Research team will use these planets to prepare Webb's high-precision instruments in order to learn more about the geologic diversity of planets throughout the galaxy, as well as the advancement of rocky planets like Earth. Isn't this fascinating? Although neither of these worlds is able to support life in the way we know it, exploring them could serve as a testbed for future in-depth studies of planets like our own. The super-hot lava covered 55 Cancri E and the airless LHS 3844b are the two planets outlined by Webb authorities. Let's have a look at them in a detailed manner. 55 Cancri E 55 Cancri E circles its parent star at a close distance of 1.5 million miles or 2.4 million kilometers, about 4% of the distance between Mercury and the Sun. The planet has melting surface temperatures above the melting point of most types of rocks, circling its star about once every 18 hours. In the Milky Way galaxy, rocky, approximately Earth-sized planets that are incredibly hot and near to their stars are usual. The James Webb Space Telescope is on a quest to learn more about these worlds. Scientists also hypothesize that the planet is tidally locked to the star, which means that one side of the planet is always facing the scorching sun, though findings from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope suggest that the hottest zone may be slightly offset. They speculate that the offset heat is caused by a thick atmosphere that can move heat around the planet or by lava raining at night which removes excess heat. Rennie Hu of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, who is leading a team which will use Webb's cameras to catch the planet's dayside thermal emission spectrum, stated that 55 Cancri E's environment could be thick with oxygen or nitrogen dominating. But JWST has the sensitivity and wave number to trace an atmosphere and determine what it's made of if it exists. Another possibility that also comes up is that 55 Cancri E is not tidally locked but like Mercury, rotates thrice for every two orbits, resulting in a day-night cycle. According to Brand Decker, this explanation would make it easier to understand the reason behind the hottest part of the planet being shifted. His team plans to use NearCam to measure the amount of heat emitted from the lit side of 55 Cancri E during four distinct orbits to assess this hypothesis. Now that definitely would be interesting, right? LHS 3844b LHS 3844b is also a close orbiter, rotating once every 11 hours around its parent star. The star, on the other hand, is smaller and cooler than 55 Cancri E. As a result, the planet's surface is likely to be much cooler, and Spitzer observations have revealed that the planet has no significant atmosphere. Using spectroscopy, a team led by astronomer Laura Kreitberg at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy hopes to capture a surface signal. Different wavelengths of light indicate different elements. Thermal emission spectrums from the planet's daylight side will be compared to known rocks such as basalt and granite to see if a surface composition can be determined. The continuum could confirm the existence of trace amounts of volcanic gases if the planet is volcanically active. The results coming up in June are expected to open up new perspectives on Earth-like planets, allowing us to learn more about what life might have been like on the primitive Earth when it was as hot as these planets are now. Webb's in-depth scientific research is set to resume soon after the first information is discovered public this summer. Are you excited to know what the future holds for these super-Earths? Do you think their contribution will lead to path-breaking research for the space industry? Let's know your thoughts in the comment section below. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content. See you in the next video.